Hey, everybody. Thank you very much for tuning in today. We're going to take a look at the old Bitcoin power trend line and see how the all time trend shakes out compared to prior years. So here we have again the good old Bitcoin pricing chart on log scale. Log scale is always important so we can see what happened here way back in Bitcoin Pizza Day, May 22nd, 2010, sub one penny Bitcoin. Our friend Laszlo making the first sort of recognized bartered deal. 10,000 Bitcoins for two pizzas, sub one penny Bitcoin. Uh, to be able to see that, you really got to put this stuff on log scale. This is uh, base 100. So you see that uh, every order of magnitude, every level up higher is 100 times the prior level. And that allows us to see again, you know, a couple bucks, $1, $2 Bitcoin here in 2010, 2011, all the way out until just yesterday, uh, jumping up here from the FTX debacle scammers in uh, 2022 to where as of uh, April 13th, day end close, $29,916 Bitcoin, basically $30,000 Bitcoin. So what I want to do on this video, I've shown this before, is I want to compare trend lines. Again, the best fitting trend line in Bitcoin is a power trend line. See my prior videos, I've run these over gold, Bitcoin, other markets. Uh, the four basic trend lines, a linear trend line, logarithmic trend line, exponential trend line, and a power trend line. Bitcoin follows a power trend line. Okay, so unlike most markets, which actually do exponential, that analogizes perfectly with compound annual growth, exponential trends. When you put those on log scale, they become a flat line. But with Bitcoin, it actually uh, more for the moment matches a power trend line, which is different. So when this goes on log scale, it's going to be still a curved line growing faster here and slower here, but a curved line. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to analyze Bitcoin's power trend lines here over the years. And I want to build up until today. OK, so let's go ahead and start with Bitcoin's 2010 trend line. Again, this is going to be a curve and I'm only going to take into account data pre 2011. OK, so. This is going to be a 2010 trend line. That's it. It only goes from uh, and it's not even all of 2010's data, right? Because we didn't have full pricing data before this. It's taking my numbers here. Bitcoin pizza day all the way until roughly here. Exactly there. 30 cents. December 31st, 2010. Bitcoin price. OK, so let's draw it. Red dotted line. So this is a power trend line. This is what fits the Bitcoin price. Uh, looks pretty good here, right? Again, the, the goodness of fit of a trend line can be measured by R squared, and you see that 87%. If it was 100%, the data would perfectly match the trend line. Uh, that rarely happens, in fact, never happens in nature. Although I'm sure some mathematician can prove me wrong there. Um, 87%, what does it mean? It simply means that the trend line uh, is 87% better than the mean. Okay, so the price, which is in green, goes around, up or down, it goes around the trend line. Uh, with 87% less variance than if we just drew a flat line, uh, the mean, during the same time period. So see my prior videos on this, log, linear, exponential, power. These are power trend lines. This is what fits Bitcoin's price the best, okay? So it looks pretty good here in 2010 and even into 2011, but let's zoom out and let's see how this looks over the lifetime of Bitcoin's price. Pretty euphoric. It would be great if we were still on this trend line, but unfortunately, really from 2011, Bitcoin's price hasn't hit this trend line again, and we've lost the trend, okay? Now in statistics, it's totally fine to say that we've lost the trend line. We've fallen out of trend. Trends can be reevaluated all the time, and it's just how you do it with single dependent variable models, which is what this is, okay? The first variable is independent, that's time. The only other variable, it's the dependent variable. What is that? It's price. So all we're doing here is analyzing the relationship between price and time. And we see that this trend line simply didn't work. This is why something like the stock to flow model is a bit uh, cheeky because the stock to flow model doesn't take into account demand. Price here does. It takes into account demand uh, at every moment. Uh, price is simply the interaction of uh, supply and demand at any given time. And we can graph that. So just for fun, let's see if we were still on this trend line. Where would Bitcoin's price be today, roughly? 
Uh, you're not misreading this, dear viewer. About a billion dollar Bitcoin. One billion dollar Bitcoin on the 2010, based on the 2010 trend line. Let's take it out to 2030. What's the price? 128 billion dollar Bitcoin. So pretty fun. This is a pretty fun trend line. Okay, I'm gonna go two years out. Let's see now. 2012's trend line. Okay, so this only goes out to 2012's data. As I've mentioned, same concept. This looks much better, doesn't it? Much, much better. Interestingly, the R squared is worse. It's only 79%, but it is a better fitting uh, trend line. Again, the eye test is also very important here. You can see that the peaks definitely catch it uh, more than 2010's trend line, which completely is off from 2011. Uh, it's a little bit higher uh, today, $100,000 Bitcoin. We haven't hit that ever, but we've been close. And if we go out to 2030, a million five for Bitcoin. Interesting. That's 2012's trend line. And when I say 2012, I mean 2010, 2011, and 2012. All pricing data up until December 31st, 2012. Let's look up until 2014's trend line. Ready? There we go. This one's actually a little bit worse now, interestingly. The R squared is better, okay? But this is just how the data shakes out. Uh, if you took, uh, again, 2014's is going to catch the 2013's two peaks of uh, $200 Bitcoin, right? In early, uh, you see there, $198 for Bitcoin, April 10th, 2013. And then, of course, it gets up to, depending on your chart, $1,213 Bitcoin by the end of 2013. We catch those peaks here with this 2014 trend line, so it's going to be elevated. This is simply how it works. The more data you add, if uh, data is higher than the trend line, the trend line will continue to be pulled up. If data is lower than the trend line, the trend line will continue to be pulled down. So this actually interestingly ends up being a little bit more of an optimistic trend line, 2014s, and uh, more optimistic than 2012s. Okay. Uh, let's take it out. 2030, roughly, you're looking at uh, uh, 7.8 million dollar Bitcoin by 2030, roughly. Okay. I'm not showing you every year, right? I'm showing you the even years, but these are the early years of Bitcoin's trend line. What I want to show you now is an important one. It's 2016. Okay. So let's only look at the data basically up until and including December 31st, 2016. I'm going to draw it right now. Okay. Here it is. It's in a Bitcoin orange color, a uh, little bit lower than 2012s, but not much. And you see the R squared is almost as good as 2014s, 90% R squared. Okay. So let's zoom out 2016's trend line. It is uh, the lowest one we've seen. Let's look at today's value. Roughly, we're at, uh, we should be at $47,000 per Bitcoin based on trend. We're at $30,000 per Bitcoin. Okay, so the closest actually. But, uh, you know, still higher than price today. Okay, so let's take it out to 2030. What does the 2016 trend line tell us? $599,000 per Bitcoin. Now, at this point, looking at 2010's tomato trend line, 2012's, which is in blue, 2014's, which is a little bit higher in purple, and 2016's, which is the lowest in orange, you may think that the general pattern here for Bitcoin is that the trend line is going to continue to fall. Right. And that's it could make sense for you to think that. Right. You just see that obviously when we're playing with dollars and cents here growing very, very fast in 2010 and 2011. And then we're now playing with tens of thousands of dollars here all the way up until today. Just the nature of the trend line is to grow slower and slower and slower. So as we move forward, you might think that 2017, 2018, 2019's trend line is going to be lower than 2016's. And I presume, dear viewer, uh, especially if you've seen my prior videos, uh, that you understand the finale of the video that I'm setting up for you here, is that that is indeed not the case. In fact, 2016's orange Bitcoin trend line, okay, that is data including 2010, 2011, 12, 13, 14, 15. This is the lowest. This is the lowest trend line that Bitcoin has painted, okay? When we cumulatively add more years, the trend line is going to be higher than 2016. Okay, so I'm going to take off 2014, 2012. We'll leave the tomato, the fun uh, 2010 trend line up. All right, so I'm going to start right now. Here comes all the data and the trend line up until December 31st, 2018, 2019, 2020, 2022, 
all time. Now you might not have even noticed that I added uh, four more years to the 2016 uh, trend line there, all in orange, dotted orange line. And then we have the Bitcoin all time trend here in black. You might not have noticed because there's so many different trends, but I did. Okay, so let's zoom in now. Uh, remember, as I said, that 2016 is denoted by the minus sign there. You can't really see it because I have they're, they're so close to each other. Okay, uh, 2020 is also uh, lower than today's trend. That's why it has a minus sign as well. But generally, look at how close all of these trend lines are to the all-time trend. And if we take this out to today, let's just read through it. Okay, so we have a Bitcoin price of roughly $30,000. Uh, the tomato trend again, awesome $1.1 billion for Bitcoin. Unfortunately, we're off that trend line. 2016, again, $48,000. 2018, 62 grand. 2019, 55 grand. 2020, 49 grand. 2022, 53 and a half grand. All time, $51,000. Now, again, this is log scale. So the fact that these things are so close together. And this is taking in so much data. It's just extremely interesting because this is the power trend line at now. Look at how those R squareds have built up over the years. We're now at 95% R squared based on the all time trend line data, a power trend line of supply intersecting with demand, i.e. price is giving us this sort of a trend line, a power curve that just keeps stamping year after year after year. And again, I do have one odd year there, 2019. But other than that, take my word for it, 2017, 2021, they're also right there as well. Okay, so let's reset the zoom. Let's see how this takes us out to 2030. Again, we should know what to expect. Roughly, it's going to be close to 2016. But 2016 is the lowest, as I mentioned, Let me get the mouse to stop there. All right, the fun one, Again, 2010's trend, $128 billion Bitcoin. It's awesome, but we're off that trend. 2016, you see there, that's the lowest, $599,000 Bitcoin, $600,000 Bitcoin. 2018, $832,000. 2019, $718,000. 2020, $627,000. 2022, 689000 And the all-time trend, which of course is going to be pretty close to 2022, but in fact, lower because it's taken in a lot of the end of 2022 and the start of uh, 2023, $650,000 Bitcoin. Again, the fact that all of these trends are so close together, I can tell you is remarkable. So again, I'm not asking you to find any magic in these numbers. This certainly uh, Past performance is not indicative of future results, never financial advice, as you know, on this channel. But uh, let's follow some signal and let's uh, stop worrying about the noise here. Uh, pretty interesting to see from 2016 on the Bitcoin power trend line basically has been stamped around these levels that suggest $600,000, $700,000 Bitcoin buy. 2030. Hope you enjoyed this. Have a great weekend. Thanks for watching.